Hello, you are listening to an archived worship service of First Presbyterian Church, Columbus, Mississippi. Thank you for listening. Within our text today, there is a conclusion. The beginning of this text actually starts way back chapters earlier in the healing of a blind man, and it kind of frames this beautiful text with the healing of blind Bartimaeus. All the things that happen in between for Christ, declaring that he is traveling to Jerusalem, all the ways that the disciples continue to get it wrong, all the ways that he continues to nourish them and to nurture them along the way. This is, this is a story about blindness. But I don't think it's as easy as a blind man. You see, I have become blind. No, not, not in a literal way, not in that sense, although it does have literal implications. My blindness comes as one who lives in an age of overstimulus, of too much information and an overall sense of complacency and even apathy about the way the world is. It is the blindness one takes on when we have tunnel vision for a goal to be accomplished. There are things that are left outside of our vision. When we turn off the devastation and the horrible images that we see on TV and we sit quietly in a room pretending like those aren't happening to real people, that's a blindness. It's a blindness when we can drive quickly past the concerns of the world, separated by our noise control of four doors and a loud radio. It is the blindness that we put on when we walk quickly past the noisy homeless person on the street or the man with his hand held out or the sign that reads, need help. There is so much hurt, there is so much pain, there is so much suffering in this world that one feels we must become blind to it, to stay sane. From the millions of refugees in Syria right now, to those in Mexico devastated by the hurricane winds, to the violence that is reported almost weekly in our schools or on our streets, to the senseless suffering that happened yesterday in Oklahoma, to tragic loss and devastation of news when friends become sick. It's all too much. We must insulate ourselves somehow. We must become, in a way, blind. But what else can you call it? What else could you call the desensitizing that we feel, that we experience in those deep cycles of violence and poverty that flood in on top of us daily? All those needs, all those hurts, we have to deal with them in some way. And blindness is a self preservation. It is a defense mechanism to keep us at arm's length. And I, I have become in too many ways blind. And it seems that I am not alone when I read a text like the one today. Willful blindness abounds in those who follow Christ. They are on a journey they have been on a journey for some time. Actually, they are nearly completed. One that has taken years and years of their life. One that has been physically and mentally draining. They now find themselves on the road from Jericho to Jerusalem. Only 15 miles remain. 
so blinded they have become the concerns of the world that they shush a man in need. A noisy beggar at the gates of the city, the truly blind, instruct him to be unseen and unheard. Here along the roadside, Jesus turns, not to open the eyes of one, but to open the eyes of many. Here we meet Bartimaeus, the one who can heal many. It's not often that we are given a name in Mark's gospel. It's actually rather important when we do. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. Bar means son, so his name and his descriptor are the same. He's son of Timaeus, son of Timaeus. And Timaeus literally means unclean, dirty, or dirt. So he is the son of dirt, the son of dirt. If you were reading this in Aramaic, that's what you would read. Son of dirt, son of dirt. With a name like that, it's not hard to assume that people have been blind to him for a long time now. Through all of this blindness, literal and figurative, one voice raises true comprehension. It is the son of dirt who exclaims, Son of Kings. He's the only one in all of Mark's gospel to give Jesus the title, Son of David. Jesus stops. He turns around and he instructs the blind to respond to the man who they've ignored. To see fully this son of dirt as something new, something different, something whole, something claimed, to see him now as a child of God. Blind Bartimaeus has been a beloved son of Scripture since the earliest days of the church. Every apostle, every scholar, every preacher for 2,000 years have admired his disorderly conduct, his shouts, his bold vision, his springing to action and his fearless shedding of his cloak, knowing that he doesn't need it anymore. His unwavering faith that Christ could change his life and his steadfastness as he joins the crowd on their march to Jerusalem. His stubbornness and his determination have been lifted up and praised as a true gift, a virtue of Christian faith. When asked what he desired most, he says, Lord, let me receive my sight again. Let me receive my sight again. I find myself less emphatic than blind Bartimaeus. I find myself to be much more timid as I say those same words. Lord, let me receive my sight again. I wonder if the other disciples who followed Jesus that day felt the same as I. Because to truly see the world is a scary thought. To bear the hurt, to bear the wounds, to confront a world without insulation and numbness, to hear all the cries along the roadside, and to be called to act as Christ does. I fear it could, I know it would, consume me. It would if it were up to me. We hear in the proclamation of the prophet this day the good news proclaimed to the people who have been captured. 
to those who've been carried off by the Babylonian Empire, God's going to do something you cannot do for yourself. God will make you whole once more. The ashes you taste in your mouth will be turned to joy. There will be dancing. God will count you among His children, His flock. God is ready to do more than we can ever dream possible. If it was up to me, I would be consumed by the world that I live in, by the hurt that surrounds me daily, by the television that tells me bad news after bad news after bad news, but it is not up to me. This is God's work. And God invites us into the process. Christ instructs His followers, tell Him to come here. Do not shush him. Do not ignore him. Do not be blind to his desires, his needs. You see, mine is not the job to heal the whole world, but it is my job as a disciple of Christ to keep my eyes and ears open to the ways that I can respond, that I can matter, the ways that I can bring healing and hope, and not to respond with a shh. It is mine to hold the boldness of Bartimaeus and to claim myself and others to be children of God. It is mine to behold the horrors of this world, but to see God's hand at work in mending and healing and wholeness. It is not mine to solve these problems alone. God has blessed us with the community of faith. We are surrounded by the witnesses of our ancestors. We are surrounded here in the presence in these pews with others who walk the same road with us and we are here daily to remind each other to open our eyes. To not allow ourselves to become blind. To see the goodness of the world and the way that God still brings joy, brings dance, brings happiness to young and old, can bring peace to a broken world. It is not for me to harden my heart and to close my eyes, but to seek out and to pray once more. Lord, let me receive my sight once again. O oh, son of dirt, help us to see the king, the son of kings, as you do. To have that trust, to know that hope. Today, as we read Bartimaeus one more time, let us remember to pray the prayer he prays before Christ. Lord, let us receive our sight once more. Today, join your voice with Bartimaeus. And it is today that our eyes are opened and we become whole. We become bold. We become once more what we are called to be, the children of God ready for the road ahead. Amen.